So can you start with a brief introduction about your name and your business? Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Rami Sabah and uh, my business specializes in the accounts receivables and the recovery of uh, overdue debts for uh, private lenders, insurance companies and banks. Thank you. And obviously you recently moved from Australia to Dubai and my, my team and myself, we helped you make that move. Um, what were the pain points you would say that you were experiencing in Australia that uh, motivated you to change countries? Yeah. Uh, so a couple of things that definitely got us across the line and made us make that decision. Um, so number one, quality of life in Dubai. Um, you know, we've had numerous people tell us quality of life in Dubai is completely different to that of Australia. Um, for anybody that knows Australia is a bit of a, um, uh, you know, there's a, there's a quite a huge tax system in place there and not just the tax, but also, um, you know, there's a safety aspect there that, that people need to consider as well. And, uh, for anybody that, you know, wants to move and, and look at, um, starting a business or even carrying their business works overseas, or even starting a family. Um, you know, Dubai ticks all those boxes, uh, definitely. Thank you. And, um, now that you've moved to Dubai, what is improvement that you see in terms of, uh, what's your experience like for your personal and for your business? What's the change? How do you feel that? Yeah. So, um, Dubai is definitely miles ahead, um, in technology. That's, that's a huge aspect, just simple things like opening bank accounts and using the apps that banks have and. Um, just, you know, the pure fact that things just stay open till like 10 o'clock at night here. So you can go and do anything you like, not just that in that put in your personal life, but also for your business and, um, the networking hub is incredible as well. People are, you know, um, always looking at helping and meeting you and finding out what you do. And, um, yeah, just people, the network is pretty much just amazing and it's, it's not, you know, pretty much closed, um, as it would be in, in Australia. So just, yeah, a couple of things just in comparison to Australia, um, Dubai is just really, uh, not just a, um, a hype, as you could say on social media, it's not just that it's, it's really more than that. And especially if you're trying to start a business, um, if you're able to do that remotely, I couldn't recommend it more. Um, because yeah, it's honestly the huge tax incentive as well. And yeah, in terms of the tax benefits, like. What is the change now? Like in your personal taxation, what percentage of tax you were in the slab in Australia and what is now in Dubai and same with the corporate for the company? Yeah. So, um, pretty much it will, for, for high income earners in Australia, uh, it's no secret, you know, it's 46% tax, um, on high income earners. So more or less just looking at, at it from an entrepreneurial basis, right? So you start a business you're in either UK or Australia or wherever you may be that has a pre, you know, strict tax system. Um, it's one thing to start a business, take that initiative and make it successful. And if it is successful, um, you're then struck by a pretty hefty tax bill from your government. So, you know, there's the, there's the reality that, you know, you could start a business and most startups fail. Um, but then there's obviously the, uh, if you get lucky or you work hard enough, um, your business is successful in the end, it's quite, um, disencouraging to start a business in a country like that, where if it is successful, you're then having to pay half of your earnings to the tax system. So, um, that's a, that's one major aspect of it. You know, not everybody wants to, or has the you know, the, the mental capacity to start their own business, let alone make it a successful one. So yeah, uh, the, the, the knowing that potentially half of your earnings in a successful business is going to a tax system, um, purely just because you live there and that's your tax residency status, it's a tough pill to swallow for most people. So, um, definitely, uh, Definitely Dubai allows you to break free from that. If your business allows you to work remotely. So yeah, coming to Dubai, there's virtually no tax for the first three years. If you, if your business makes, I think it's two or 3 million. I'm not an accountant. Don't quote me on that, <laughs> but I did speak to an accountant. Um, and for the first three years, there's, uh, virtually no tax. And even after the three years, it's, it's minimal. It's absolutely nowhere near what you would pay in, 
in the UK or Australia. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for that background. What was your experience like working with me and my team and the support that you received for everything from the business, the immigration, the banking, all of those things yeah. combined? And obviously there was some initial um, rejections within the application that we had to deal with. If you can share your experience. Yeah, absolutely. So for anybody that's potentially looking at doing this, I just want to say one thing. I know exactly what you're thinking. You're thinking, I'm looking online. There's all these different reviews about all these different companies. I'm not sure what to do. Um, you know, some of them just want your money. Some of them don't really, you know, you, you're worried that if you pay them, they're probably going to lose less, you know, give less attention to you. You don't know what it is. And of course you're in another country and you're hiring somebody that's all the way across the world. And you're not sure about what the type of experience that you're going to receive is. These were all my concerns at first. And that's why I think I was a little bit, um, straightforward and I'll tell you now, if you're going to work with setup hero, particularly Shiraz, of course, throw all those worries out the window. And I'm not just saying this and, and, and the reality is we, we face challenges and it's not like it was just a normal A to B, uh, process with, with my particular application. And it was a lot of loops that Shiraz and his team had to jump through to get me across the line. And regardless, um, I don't think I would have expected that level of service from another, um, provider purely because my application was a little bit of a headache to deal with. It was a, uh, it was, a, it was a special one and look more or less your, whoever's watching this, your application will probably be easier to mine. So your experience will be even better, but I can tell you now there was not the slightest concern at all in the, uh, in any of the process from from obtaining, from, from company incorporation to obtaining visa to, uh, even everything after that, everything was just, you know, me personally, I've had some, some family members that have come over here and did the process themselves and they advised me to do it them, uh, myself. And I can't stress to you the need to, to, to have a, uh, have an agent like, like Shiraz and, and set up here on your side, because it is not a simple process at all. It's a process that really requires someone that knows exactly what they're doing, that gives you the, give, that's going to give you the right advice. And plus when, especially when you're, when you're, um, making this decision and under a particular time frame that you're, that you've got to do it by, uh, you need somebody that's done it many, many times before and knows what to expect in terms of time frames, um, how the, uh, the governing body is going to react to certain things. Um, pretty much just had that level of experience and can make, can guide you in the right direction. And I can't stress enough that, you know, or, or if all, if any of my friends want to come and do exactly what I've done, I send them directly to Sharath because after all, I'm not going to, um, tell my family and friends to go with somebody that I don't completely a hundred percent agree and, and believe in. So. Yeah, that's, um, that's just my experience with your set up hero, nothing short of, uh, remarkable. Thank you. Thank you Remy, for your kind words. I appreciate that. Um, it was a pleasure to, to, to service you in the way and help you bring your case to the finish line. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate it. I definitely, definitely do appreciate it. It's been a life changing decision for me and, um, not certainly not an easy one. So, um, and for anybody that's looking at doing it, obviously I, I'm, you know, I've, I've been there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all the concerns just, yeah, it's definitely a right decision going with setup hero. Like one more connected question. So when we were trying to start the work, right, you were looking at a few quotations and a few companies yep. to work with. Mm -hmm. Obviously my quotation is not the cheapest one or you're not the cheapest one in the market. Yeah. What this, what were the factors that you decided, okay, no, this is the company or this is the person I want to work with. Yeah. So. Just like many other things in life, you know, it's pretty much pay to play, right? And you pay for what you get for. That's really what I can say. Cause you, if, if you want to, if you want to pay for an experienced agency that, that knows what they're doing rather than probably somebody that's done it for a few handful of clients and that hasn't worked with, um, you know, meticulous cases that require that extra level of attention, um, look, don't. This is, this is not something that, um, you know, you could cheap out on. You've got to pay that extra, 
it's it's not even a, a vast difference anyway, right? So um, when you're considering something that's so that's so much of an impact on your life, I wouldn't say, you know, find the cheapest one. This is pretty much just a you know a one time thing that you're that you're doing in your lifetime. Make sure you do it with the right engine. Do it once. Do it right, and you know you get what you pay for in the end. So that's pretty much what I have to say about that. Thank you. And one more question that I have, like, what advice do you give to entrepreneurs in Australia back home who are building a business within Australia with the ability to work remotely, but in a condition where whatever they make, half of it is going back to the government? What advice would you give them? Yeah. So as hard as it is, as it is to leave your family, because more, you know, but in, in, in 90% of cases, if you're living there, your family is also living there. And as hard as it is to leave your family, um, I would say it's not easy to make a business and let alone start a, uh, sorry, make it, have it to be successful. And if it is successful in the end, just know that up to 46% of it will be owed to your government. And if that's not a tough pill to swallow, then I, I don't know what is right. So I just want to, um, pretty much if it, have that in your mind that if you do want to start a business, that's great. If you're going to put in all your effort and make it successful, that's also great. And if it is successful, just know that if you had done this here and if you have the ability to do it, to work remotely and do it here, then the sky's the limit. You know, you, you keep everything that you make more or less, and you can use that to start another business. Um, you know, everybody knows time is money. So if you can get 46% of your time back, then imagine how much more you can achieve in, in that, in that time period. Well, thank you, Rami, for your time today. I enjoyed speaking to you. I enjoyed working with you and I look forward to continually working with you in the future. Absolutely. Sure. Thanks so much for everything. Appreciate it, mate. Yeah.